Hello boys and girls, Brad the Guitologist here. In today's video, we are going to build a dummy load together using these uh, resistors that uh, you can buy off eBay. They're not expensive. They're only a couple dollars a piece. And by the time you buy all four of them, you're still in it for probably around under $10. Uh, and if you can do what I'm about to do, you can build the whole dummy load for uh, around $10 or less. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. The one thing we're going to need to really do this right is some kind of chassis to put this dummy load inside of. And it needs to be something ideally that's going to dissipate heat very well. So what I'm looking for here is something that has some heat sinks that I can uh, mount these resistors to. And I think this is going to work very well. This is a amplifier that was sent to me by a viewer of the channel, Sean, over at Scar Guitar. He thought I might be able to use this in a video and uh, I, I think he didn't ever imagine that this would be the type of video that I would use it in. But what we're going to do here is uh, disassemble this thing. We're going to take all of the stuff out of it and we're basically only going to use these heat sinks and probably this outer shell. Now that we have this thing entirely disassembled, we can see what sort of parts we can work with here. Uh, the disassembly did yield three large heat sinks. Uh, these are made of aluminum, these black aluminum plates. Uh, we also got a ton of hardware, just lots of nuts and bolts and screws that we will use in the construction of the dummy load. We also got some really big uh, high value capacitors as you can see at the top of your screen right there we might use in some future project uh, we also each one of these boards also has uh two or three transistors that are old uh some of them may be germanium who knows and some of them might sound good in pedals at some point in the future so uh yeah and some output uh, transistors as well that we might use to fix some future failing uh, solid state amplifiers so we do have a lot of parts in this also a large transformer there i think i measured the output of that transformer and the voltages that i was seeing were in the 50 volt range i don't know if we ever have some project in the 50 volt range we might use that transformer transformer as well. Okay, so now with all the parts stripped from the heat sinks and the heat sinks cleaned thoroughly, uh, we can begin to mount these resistors onto these heat sinks. And luckily, there were a couple of holes already in the heat sinks. I didn't even have to drill because they were the exact spacing that we needed. So we oriented these in such a way to utilize those existing holes in this heat sink. You may have to drill holes in your heat sink for whatever you find. Also, we're going to cover the bottom of this with some thermal paste. You can also find thermal paste on eBay or uh, at any of your electronic supply stores. They also sell it at computer shops usually uh, for installing on processors and computers.
So far, I did not have a fully fledged plan on how I was going to wire this thing up uh, electronically, but I did know how I wanted to install it. I wanted to use the top of the Dynaco amplifier because it had a lot of holes in it. It would uh, dissipate heat very easily. If I ever want to add a fan to it, I should be able to add a fan and it'll uh, allow for a lot of really good airflow all the way around uh, these resistors, which will get hot. Uh, I also found uh, found it easy to drill into this material uh, as it was already perforated uh, so all of my drill holes lined up nicely um, also was able to use some of these existing standoffs from that I took from the amplifier to stand off these uh, heat sinks uh, from the side of this thing so they don't flop around so it was just a really good idea I think all around it just worked out really well I should probably talk a little bit about why I'm building this dummy load in the first place. This will be replacing my existing dummy load, which is a, a very old ceramic uh, wire wound resistor that is also adjustable. This thing uh, will handle 200 watts at 150 ohms. Uh, but the thing is, when you shorten the distance across this resistor, um, you're actually also shortening the area that uh, is allowed to dissipate heat. So I think uh, at the end of the day, by the time I get this thing down to 16 or 8 ohms, uh, it's getting so hot I don't I'm not I really don't trust it to be able to dissipate all the heat uh, that an amplifier can produce and it's just a lot safer I think to use something um, more like what we're doing here Okay, so one jack, one switch, and a few wires later, and we have ourselves a really nice dummy load, I think. As you can see here, there is a switch that switches between 16 and 8 ohms. I will show you the exact uh, schematic for this thing in just a moment. But yeah, man, I, th I think this looks pretty good overall. I used an old power cord that I pulled off of an amplifier or some other such thing or old radio uh, for the wiring because they can handle the amps. Uh, you can see that it does measure correctly uh, when you test for the load. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at the exact wiring that we used. Okay, so I mulled over for a little while how I wanted to do this and try to draw some things out. Um, there are a couple different ways you can make an 8 ohm load that utilizes all four of the 8 ohm resistors and you want to do that for reasons of, of uh, heat dissipation and power handling. Uh, here is one of the methods of doing it. The signal goes through two 8 ohms in parallel. Uh, that drops this to four ohms total at this point. Uh, then you come back around. This is four ohms as well. So really what you have is you have a four ohm resistance and a four ohm resistance at that point in series. Uh, for a total of 8 ohms. So really you're utilizing all four of these 8 ohm resistors and you're only getting 8 ohms total out of this entire circuit. Another way to do it is to come in to two of these resistors. You go through uh, 
these in the whole circuit is in parallel so really what you have on this side is you have eight ohms plus eight more ohms that's 16 ohms on this side and on this side you have 16 ohms but those are being run in parallel this side and this side are parallel so uh, that's a total of eight ohms also and if you'll notice uh, to get 16 ohms you can do it this way you can run two of the eight ohms in uh, series so that is basically one half of this circuit so I decided to wire my circuit in this manner uh, to get a total of 8 ohms and what you're going to end up with here is 200 watts total of power handling uh, you're going to end up with some good dissipation uh, when you run two resistors in series like this you don't increase your power handling but when you run the this this side and this side in parallel in this manner you double it so we have a uh, hundred watts total on this side power handling we have 100 watts total on this side power handling and when those are run in parallel uh, they add together for a total of 200 watts at 8 ohms uh, which is m more than enough for most everything I will ever do uh, in terms of guitar amps uh, there will probably be some bass amps that won't uh, I won't be able to do with with this but we'll come to that when we get to it we'll cross that bridge later uh, this 16 ohm is going to be 100 watts total at 16 uh, and that's only half of the circuit so really what we need to make this circuit work is just we need a way to uh, switch off one of these sides so what we do is we put a when we come in we go to both these sides in parallel but on one side we will place a switch and I've drawn it out over here so what we do here's the input uh, Here's where the signal comes in. You just go, you go to one side of this, right? So that was always on, but this other side is switchable. So here's, this represents my little switch right there. Uh, so this side is switchable. So when you switch this side off, it cuts this off. So this is not in the circuit. This gives us a, a switching between eight and 16 ohms doing it this way. Now I, could do a four ohm as well and um, I would have to probably do that on a separate board because this isn't going to be possible I don't think at least easily uh, not without some uh, dual throw switches which I don't have at the moment so what I'll probably do is just and these things are so cheap I'll probably uh, just order a couple more of these 8 ohm resistors and mount it to this board and then I also I have some room I think in the back or maybe even on the side here I can mount another one of these heat sinks uh, with two more of these and we'll do this in parallel next time to get four ohms so I'll have another basically another input jack and another uh, another board over here for my four ohms but that's uh, that's gonna cut this is gonna cover 95% of everything I'll ever do probably 99% of everything I'll ever do or between the 8 and the 16 ohm option all right, guys, that'll do it for our little tutorial on how to build your own dummy load. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, hit subscribe down below. And for now, we will see you all later.